So in the reading that Reverend Rodney and Michael just shared, I relate to the coffee beans most days. <laughs> but I know I've also experienced the other states of being. There have been times when I chose not to speak my mind out of fear that I might receive substandard medical care or that my child could be hurt. Or I could be killed on a back road, just never heard from again. There have been times when I wanted to speak out against something that I saw and I knew was wrong, but out of fear, I thought to myself, I can't lose my job today. So I said nothing. I love coffee, the richness of all the flavors, the various levels of potency, all of the things that you can do with coffee, and so it is with human beings. If we allow ourselves to take in the richness, the fullness, the flavors that are around us, there is so much available to us. I want to talk about the three sides of the spiritual foundation that Dr. King described. First. Use personal, authentic fulfillment of the self. As I read this, what I hear is the expectation that I bring my true self into interactions. I am accountable for my personal development and how I express who I am. So the question I have is, what happens when there are forces around me holding me back because they're afraid of my whole self? And what about those situations where my richness, my passion, can be interpreted as threatening? Because what I represent is different from what has been, and my very presence is a threat to the way others see themselves. This speaks to the uneven resourcing of power and how it is used. Who has it and who doesn't? Ask the people in Flint, Michigan, or Jackson, Mississippi, or Baltimore. Who has the power? Water to drink, to bathe, to cook is considered a given in most communities in these United States. These predominantly black communities are dealing with years of discrimination and poor management that has led to this and will continue to impact the community from elders to babies beyond the foreseeable future. They will survive, but the impact of subjugating lives for the sake of power is a cost well beyond the immediate community. These are not examples of history. These are today. The second is communal social engagement of responsibility. And it speaks to the recognition that it is not just about me. It is truly about all of us. So I recently heard a quote from a book that I plan to read called All American Boys. The quote was from Hillel the Elder, a rabbi from the first century, who said, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? But if I am only for myself, what am I? When I looked up the fuller quote, he went on to say, if not now, when? That which is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. This book, All American Boys, which is now banned in school libraries, was written by a black man, Jason Reynolds, and a white man, Brendan Kiley giving the very different narratives of two teens going through a single experience but having a very different response. While the book is fiction, the narrative is not. The authors met on the day George Zimmerman was found not guilty of killing Trayvon Martin. Brendan was surprised when J Jason received a phone call from his mother expressing concern for her black son to be careful about the possible George Zimmerman that might be coming for him. Brendan reflected, my mother would never make that call. It would never occur to her to be worried. But this is the reality that many people of color experience regularly, and we must teach our children. 
In what we call the talk, we are told how to behave when we are in the presence of power, power that does not see us, does not value us, does not regard us. In those moments of confrontation, we are very aware of the potential that a simple move can bring us harm. We recognize when our children walk out the door, they need to be equipped for that moment. This is not history. This is today. Brendan realized that he needed to listen to the narratives that were different from his own. The willingness, the mandate that we listen to each other to hear, to learn, to know, to understand, that is communal social engagement. And the responsibility is to carry the wisdom out into the world. Wisdom shared, not shaped. Our sacred kinship and connection with all creation. This was the third side of, spring, of King's spiritual foundation. If you do not know my story, if you cannot know my truth, you will not understand my reality. What King talked about was how we connect with one another, agape love, faithfulness, commitment, and an act of the will a love that is of and from God, whose very nature is love itself. Clinical social worker Resma Menachem talks about the charge that is within us around conversations about race. This charge is about 400 years old, and we carry it very differently in our bodies. Those experiences come bubbling to the surface in our interactions. He describes a process he calls somatic abolitionism, referring to the fact that we need to deal with this very visceral, internalized trauma by allowing ourselves to experience feelings of discomfort and vulnerability. When I listen to the experiences of others in my BIPOC group, I celebrate their joys and bear witness to the pain of people who have experienced racial trauma. Their story becomes part of my story to carry. My witness to their pain is, in that moment, part of their healing. Menachem goes on to say that emerging happens when we are in connection. This is what King was talking about, this sense of being willing to come to each other in our full selves, to sit with one another, sharing that sense of being responsible to and for each other from a place of commitment, but also safety. And we do this in the realm of spiritual connection because spiritual connection raises up our sense of belonging. Our divine connection becomes a shared responsibility in which all of us must engage. To work on ourselves, within ourselves, our families, our social networks, then reaching out, connecting with communities around us. Brendan, the white co-author of All American Boys, describes his commitment to understand stories that are not part of his lived experience as critical in order to build what Dr. King called beloved community. If the sides of our foundation are in harmony, a well-measured, well-built home can endure storms of all kinds, lasting a lifetime, many lifetimes. If we come together in agreement that there is work to be done and to recognize the commitment that's involved, we can create a home that's built to last. As we continue here at MDUUC and out in the world to build community, it is necessary to understand that racism is a tool of power, but it's a fundamental weakness to the foundation of our house. But as we dismantle racism, the restructuring that takes place is our opportunity to build a house much stronger, much more enduring, 
that is shelter and sustenance for all of us. The fact that we are having these discussions across the country on this day in celebration of this incredible visionary, Dr. King's dream is still very much alive. But we have a lot of work to do before it is no longer a dream, but our lived, shared reality. Let us all become baristas. Thank <laughs> you.